I'm going to demonstrate a process that's a bit of a cheat, but as David Hockney proves, this is a process that has been used for a long time. Now, if you look here, he is using a lens, a camera obscura type lens, to project a real life image onto a piece of paper. It's inverted upside down. But in effect, it's a tracing technique. And artists have been doing this since the Renaissance. There are all kinds of diagrams of this. And David Hockney in this book talks about and proves the theory that there is distortion that's created through a lens. Although I've been showing you a process with a lens, we're not going to use a lens. We are going to use a trace-based technique. So I've taken an image of a pepper on a piece of paper. I've printed it out on thin, thin paper, photocopy style paper. It works best for this technique. Now I want to go over the back of it with a pencil. Some people use a graphite stick, but graphite sticks are often a little bit softer. You get less kind of concentrated pressure and you get a kind of more broken um, surface to it. So that it doesn't transfer quite as well as if you're using a standard pencil here. I'm using a B, could use a 2B. I don't go much softer than that. So I don't particularly want to shade the full back area. So I'm going to just shade locally. If I hold this up to the light, you can just about see this, because there's a window to my right. You can see where the image is. If I hold it against a window, this makes it a bit easier. So I'm just drawing the area I'm going to shade in, and then with quite even pressure, I'm just gonna fill out that area. So as usual, I'm not doing more work than I need to do. I'm being quite efficient in my process. Now this process is like using tracing paper to some degree, but you do not have to invert the image and switch it over and so on. So it's just going to transfer directly as it is below. I've just got some masking tape, I've only got a teeny bit, and to stop it tearing the paper, I'm just going to handle it or stick it against some fabric for a moment and then secure it. Two pieces of tape will act as an anchor. If you have one piece, it'll be like a fulcrum and this will move around much more. So if you tape two pieces, it's often better than one. Right, a bit of an angle now. And then I've got a sharp pencil and I'm going to start drawing around the outline. As if by magic, a very, very faint line is transferred to the paper below. If you want a crisper line, you're obviously going to press a little bit harder. Now, this is to help you speed up the drawing. You could obviously use the techniques we've shown you previously to draw your image using a grid transfer method, a symmetry plot. You could just freehand draw it. You could use shape to sketch out the kind of peppers and oval flutter at the top and so on. And the amount of information you want to transfer is entirely up to you. But because I'm going to just get the structure down, See, I'm just putting seeds into here, but I'm following the outline quite accurately. So I would essentially draw the whole thing in, but I wouldn't necessarily put all these textures into this area. And I might not put every single detail into there, just get enough in to help me and speed up the process. That's the only reason why I'm using this. So I've done a little bit more since you were last here. And I'm comparing, I'm looking at it, I'm putting it down. I realise I've missed this line here. I might just put some of that tonal change in there, or colour change. Look into here, there's a bit there that hasn't got any detail into it. I might just put a little bit more into there. And largely, I think I've got enough structure onto here now to develop the drawing. So I'm going to remove the paper quite carefully because of the tape that was on it I didn't want to tear the base piece and I've got another image of the pepper sometimes I have multiple images I will demonstrate this in other videos where I work from multiple source pictures because I'm trying different things now the first thing I'm going to do is start some tonal work onto here but I'm going to work from the dark areas so I'm looking into this section and it's very very dark just here the light's not brilliant on this desk and if I put the light on in the room because it's a ceiling lamp, I start to get shadows, which makes the video a little bit hard to watch. So I'm starting to put dark tones in. I'm not finishing a section of it at all. I'm looking for areas that are really dark. 
this is an organic structure. So if I come off my line a little bit, I'm not too worried as long as it still looks like a convincing pepper. It doesn't have to be exactly the same as this pepper. So you see how I'm using a combination of line and solid fill areas. It's dark there and it gets slightly lighter up here. It's a little dark line in there. But notice that I'm doing it. I'm not drawing a heavy outline. Remember the old thing I'm always going on about. This isn't Bart Simpson. It hasn't got a consistently heavy outline. So whilst I say I'm putting in the dark tone, you can see I'm putting a little bit of tonal range into there. Maybe not quite as much as it is here. But remember, what I'm suggesting is we're trying to make something look like a pepper. It doesn't have to be exactly this pepper. So if you're not sure on something, if you squint your eyes, you reduce the amount of light that you can see and it'll give you some guidance as to where you're going to put your dark areas. So into this seed here, kind of not a consistent circular line around the outline. I'm just showing the shadows around the edge. And then there's some shadow into here. Now, the, the time you've saved with the trace base just to get the structure down, you're going to invest that time in developing your tone and just working up and down tone. So like I say, I start with dark generally and then work out where I'm going to leave light areas and then start to fill in mid-tone. So this, I'd say, is moving into the mid-tone range. This pencil is a little bit soft. I might go back into it to get some definition in places with a HB later, but you in theory can see what's beginning to happen. So into here, I feel like along the edge, it's like a little bit more like a line. It's heavier there, it's quite dark. It goes around that seed, there's a little seed emerging just here. It's quite dark down there. It's shady on the bottom side of that, a seed below it. And you see how I'm just looking for, there was a little shadowy line there that I'd drawn in in the previous trace base section. And I'm using these things as a guide. So I can change it. If I think there's too many seeds and I don't really need them all, I might take a few out. But what I don't want to do is have a heavy outline around them because there isn't an outline. They are not Bart Simpson. There are tonal changes. So I'm trying to make it look like that. So onto this seed, it's slightly darker. Put some little textures into it. And it does look like there's a little bit of seed down behind it. But I'm now going to start working on the pepper. If I look at the inside structure of a pepper, I have drawn a pepper before, they're kind of like cells. So if I draw a section over here, I don't know if you can see that, they're like the cells you might see in a plant structure. And so I might imply in the shading some sort of structural marks. Equally, there's the direction of them. Remember, I talk about directional line quite often. And look for direction into your mark making. You see it up on the stem where you see those ridges. This is an old pepper and it looks like it's wearing and down. It's beginning to decay a little bit. And so you begin to see it wither and get those little lines into it. And if it doesn't want a heavy outline, I'm putting in quite a gentle, subtle edge and blending it in. And I'll keep working onto those tones as I go around the image. I'm going to add a little bit more tone up here. You begin to see the structure of the pepper coming together. Right, so I've added a little bit more tonal work into this section. So there's a bit more range in, in the tones you can see. And I'm still building up. So I'm not finishing a section. I'm making adjustments as I go. Notice I'm not drawing a heavy outline. I cannot emphasise this enough. I know I always go on about this. But you can fill in an area and just get a tonal base down and then go back into it and add some detail. Remember the cells I was talking about over here? And you can imply more than you can necessarily see if you know more about the object. When we look at objects, we analyse them and you can bring prior knowledge to a subject as well. So I'm just throwing some tone down into here. So I've got some of these darker areas It comes down there. It gets lighter here and it goes darker along there. I'm going to put some more of that tone in and then I'll do some adjustments and building up afterwards. Now, you can add more detail with a harder pencil. This is an HB pencil. It's from Manchester Museum. You can see the museum logo on it and lots of very nice little animals. Um, but the reason why I'm using an HB is because I can add some quite sharp definition. So into here, 
and add a much finer line with it. So there is a place for an HB pencil. Don't think it's art, you can't use an HB pencil. I use them a lot. And here there's little tone areas. You can get very dark tones with them, obviously, if you press really hard. Right to here, because the lines are coming down and round. I'm going to emphasise some of those lines into the surface. And also a little bit of shadow. It just gives a much more controlled, much sharper line. And the 2B, because it's softer, that doesn't have quite as much density to the edge. So you can see what I'm using this pencil for. Now, I don't use a vast number of pencils. I work with an HB. I never go harder than an HB. Down to a 2B, but some people remember go much, much softer. 